Ah, love. That fluttering feeling that makes your stomach tingle, your body ache with excitement, and your heart beating so fast that you don't even know what to do with yourself. But as painful as it can be to lose love, being in love is an experience unlike any other, where we wish to hold on to so dearly to our hearts. Saying that, did you know that when we're in love, what's actually going on isn't really in our hearts, but actually in our brains? Yep, you've heard that right. Love does not have it in our hearts as we standardly think of, and instead there is something that is chemically changing in our brain when we fall in love. In this video, I go through exactly that, understanding what it means to have love on our brain. But before I dive into it, if you've ever been in love yourself, give this video a huge thumbs up. I myself would truly love that. And don't forget to subscribe to this channel if you want to continue to get fed nuggets of gold on brain and behavior. So looking at falling in love, the act itself triggers physical and emotional responses. There are chemicals like dopamine, cortisol, serotonin, oxytocin, and vasopressin kicking in. All of these chemicals play a part in the feelings of euphoria, attachment, and even stress, believe it or not. In fact, at the beginning stages of love, there is a huge increase of dopamine and norepinephrine levels which leads to the intense feelings of pleasure and focus, which explains why, when we're madly in love at the start, all we can see is our partner, having tunnel vision for no one else. This is so much so that even the expression love is blind may be valid from a scientific perspective. Love not only triggers positive emotions, but also deactivates the brain's pathways associated with negative feelings like fear and social judgment. This involves two neurological pathways where one linking positive emotions from the prefrontal cortex to the nucleus accumbens, and another for negative emotions linking the nucleus accumbens to the amygdala. So when we're in love, this brain's critical assessment mechanisms actually kind of turn off. So we're not as rational as we'd like to believe, which is why the expression love is blind actually holds some validity. So as our love progresses and romance dawns, brain regions rich in dopamine, specifically the caudate nucleus and the ventral tegmental area, light up. One of the reasons why this is important to know is because these areas are associated with pleasure and reward. In one 2005 study, Helen Fisher, a biological anthropologist, studied 166 different societies looking at what our brains do at romantic love. In all of these societies, at least 147 of them existed the concept of romantic love, so this is very shared throughout so different societies. In her studies, Fisher also conducted research using functional MRI scans to study brain activity related to romantic love, examining over 2,500 brain scans. In these studies, participants were shown images of their romantic partners compared to acquaintances. After they were shown images of these romantic partners, the areas that I mentioned lit up. What's interesting to note is the ventral tegmental area, also known as the brain's reward circuit, is considered a primitive neural network that has existed since ancient times. Jacqueline Olds, an associate professor of psychiatry at Harvard Medical School, noted on the study, we know that primitive areas of the brain are involved in romantic love. These areas light up on brain scans when talking about a loved one. These areas can stay lit up for a long period for some couples. Then, as we mentioned earlier, oxytocin and vasopressin also play crucial roles. Oxytocin, which we've discussed in other videos on pleasure and pain, is released during physical intimacy and skin-to-skin -skin contact. It's the chemical that releases when we have strong feelings of attachment and share intimacy with a person, whether it's a kiss or a hug. Also known as the love hormone, this chemical plays a key role in promoting contentment, calmness, and a sense of security, which is essential for social bonding. Vasopressin, on the other hand, is associated with fostering long-term monogamous relationships. The interplay of these two hormones is an explanation as to why we go from having heightened passionate love to eventual deeper more settled attachment as time passes. So settling into long-lasting love, studies show that the brain's basal ganglia responsible for motor control and attachment are actually activated in newlywed couples. But you might be thinking, well, that's probably because they're freshly wed. Some of you, especially those who grew up in an age of dating apps and whatnot, may not even believe that long-lasting love is possible as the feelings inevitably died out. While the initial honeymoon phase and the sparks of euphoria does eventually settle, when it comes to lasting love, we actually turn into a more compassionate sense of love that still resembles the chemical reaction of romantic love. So, chemically and scientifically speaking, it doesn't truly disappear. In fact, in a 2011 study by Stony Brook University, they found that even married couples of over 20 years had the same intensity of activity in the dopamine-rich areas of the brain, the same as those newly wed couples. And in these marriages of 20 years or more, areas associated with reward and motivation, as mentioned earlier, continue to remain active, similar to those romantic stages of love. And as relationships dive deeper and we begin to bond closer to another as the years pass, 
you begin to see some other cognitive areas of the brain being activated. One key area to take note of is the angular gyrus, which is linked to complex language functions and the mirror neuron system, enhancing anticipatory understanding between partners. This is why when you have been with someone for long enough, they've almost become an extension of you, knowing exactly what you're about to say and are thinking. As neuroscientist Stephanie Cassiopo, a PhD and author of Wired for Love states, people in love have this symbiotic synergistic connection thanks to their mirror neuron system. And that's why we often say some couples are better together than some of their parts. Love makes us sharper and more creative thinkers. So while all of the scientific information is great and love itself is amazing and it feels awesome to be in love, why is all of this important? Well, according to science, love, particularly in its long form, offers significant health benefits. For one, as your brain reward circuit, the area sensitive to pleasure, lights up as mentioned earlier, our levels of serotonin, the hormone regulating appetite and intrusive anxious thoughts, also drops. This is why being in love puts you at ease, makes you less stressed and less anxious. Love in its truest, long-lasting form can also help to improve mental well-being, enhance the immune system, and even offer some protection against physical pain. Additionally, love is linked to better cardiovascular health and may contribute to longer lifespans. As noted in a 2013 study, they found that people who were married ages 35 to 64 were less likely to experience having a heart attack compared to those who weren't married of the same age. In another 2015 analysis surveying 72,000 adults, those who were in meaningful high satisfaction relationships had better overall health and lower risk of mortality. And then to add to that, in another 2000 study, they found that when people had their romantic partner by their side or even just thinking about them, blood pressure lowered. So in the end, real long-lasting love isn't just a sense of comfort. It's an actual chemical response within the body that truly makes us feel at ease, happy, and fulfilled. As the earlier Stephanie Cassiopo mentions, love is a biological necessity. It's as needed for our well-being as exercise, water, and food. So while love may settle, this does not mean we can't reignite that flame that it once was. It's normal for us to settle into a state of comfort from the hustle of life with work, children, and other familial matters affecting our lives. But with the right effort, it's worth noting that just experimenting with a varied sexual activity can increase the oxytocin levels that are felt at the beginning stages of love, as I talked about earlier. And in that way, you can fine-tune your brain to feel passionately toward your partner, fall in love all over again, and just make sure to be more intimate and show your partner that you truly do love them. So if you enjoyed what you learned about this video and want to know a little bit more about the mirror neurons that I talked about, check out the next video. I think you would really definitely like it. And make sure to subscribe to this channel if you want to continue getting more content like this so I can help you continue to mind the golden mind.